Howdy folks, Dave here with another quick model making tip from Thunder Mesa Studio. Today I want to talk to you about layout lighting, a very important aspect of presenting our models which is sometimes overlooked. Here on the Thunder Mesa layout I use two kinds of lighting to ensure that the modeled scenes will look their best both on camera and in person. When I first relocated the layout to this new space, I was very excited to find that it had suspended track lighting already installed. Track lighting is ideal for medium to large layouts with an open plan like mine since you can move and reposition the individual lighting fixtures. These fixtures also have ball socket joints so you can direct the light exactly where you want it. When positioning the light fixtures, I try to keep an eye on the already established light direction on the painted backdrop, and in the case of Thunder Mesa, that's high and to the left. That is where the sun is in this imaginary world. While it's not always possible or even desirable to have all of your lighting fixtures pointed in the exact same direction, having a consistent idea of where the light is coming from will go a long way towards making your scenes look more believable. You really want to try to avoid what I call lighting contradictions, where the same intensity of light is coming at a scene from opposite directions or in conflict with the light that's depicted on a, a painted or photographic backdrop. That's why choosing a specific time of day for your layout is so important, uh, unless you have some sort of fancy computer controlled lighting rig that can simulate the position of the sun at different times of day, you're pretty much locked into either mid-morning or mid-afternoon when the sun is neither too high in the sky or too low. And unless you're trying to model it a completely overcast day, you really want to steer clear of those big tube fluorescent lights, you know, the kind that come in every basement and garage. Uh, those are work lights and they provide a nice even illumination for seeing what you're working on, but they're not really show lights. And let's face it, even if it's just for you, what we're doing here with the Model Railroad is putting on a show. We've all seen layouts where the lighting choice always seems to be 12 o'clock noon by default, and that direct overhead lighting doesn't do anyone's modeling any favors. Just as in real life, uh, shadows add interest and drama, and without them, even the finest modeling can look flat, washed out, and uninteresting. And that brings us to the bulbs themselves. LED lights have come a long way in recent years, and that's what I like to use in my overhead track lighting. I prefer these bright white or warm white LED bulbs, which are equivalent to about a 60 watt incandescent, while only actually pulling about 8.8 .8 watts themselves. These bulbs stay relatively cool, they don't draw a lot of current, and they will last a very, very long time. When choosing LED bulbs, just be wary of the so-called daylight bulbs. While the name might make them sound like they're just what you need, the light tends to skew way towards the blue side of the spectrum and can look unnatural, in my opinion. Of course, as any photographer can tell you, warm white bulbs, like the incandescents they're meant to replace, can make your photographs look yellow, and that's true. But that brings us to the second kind of lighting that I use on the layout. To balance out that yellow, and to add a certain deep technicolor richness to the lighting, I've installed blue LED tape light right along the edges of the tracks themselves. Attaching the LED strip to the edge of the track lighting allows the light to shine onto the walls, onto the backdrop, rather than down onto the layout, and so it just adds a sort of atmospheric layer to the entire lighting scheme. Think of it this way. If the warm white bulbs in the tracks represent the sun, then the blue LED tape light represents the atmosphere that that sunlight is being filtered through. Take a look at these before and after shots that demonstrate what I mean. The before shot shows the scene with the warm white bulbs alone, while the after shot shows the exact same scene with the blue LED tape light turned on to balance things out. See 
See the difference? Of course, the blue light also does a great job of simulating a moonlit night sky when the track lighting is turned off. So that, in a nutshell, is how I light the Thunder Mesa layout. And that two-step lighting effect is one of the reasons my layout might look a little bit different than the others you may have seen. If the colors seem a little richer and deeper, that's intentional. The overall scheme is meant to evoke the classic movie westerns, back when directors like Howard Hawks and John Ford were making them in Technicolor and Cinemascope. But that's not the end of the story. I've actually decided to replace the blue LED tape light with some programmable RGB strip. I've already done it in one section, and the results look very promising. With changeable RGB lights, I'll be able to make subtle adjustments to the light temperature, while also simulating the warmer or cooler light seen at different times of day, such as early morning or sunset. And I will keep you posted on how all of that turns out. Until then, thanks so much for watching today. Please like, subscribe, share, and hit that notification bell. Hey, it's free. You can also follow Thunder Mesa over on Instagram at thunder.mesa and find all that's new on the Thunder Mesa Studio website, including how to become a studio member, where you can get uh, early access to these videos, uh, exclusive live streams, and parts and kits from my builds. That's at thundermesa.studio slash membership. Until next time, keep moving forward, my friends. Adios for now.